Hello and welcome to the Aquarium. Come in and take a seat, the show is about to begin. During the 1800s, scientists at the time seemed to be in a rush to name as many prehistoric species as possible. I've talked many times about the bone wars involving Cope and Marsh, but they weren't the only ones. In 1873, Henry Emile Sauvage named Leopleurodon from just three teeth found in France, measuring around 7 cm in length. Since then, many more specimens have been found, including one complete skeleton. Leopleurodon was a pliosaur, a group of large marine reptiles related to plesiosaurs. It lived in the oceans of the Jurassic, and its fossils have mainly been found in England and France. The Leopleurodon is probably one of the more well-known marine reptiles due to the 2005 viral video, Charlie the Unicorn. Oh God, what is that? It's a Leopleurodon, Charlie! A magical Leopleurodon! And its appearance on Walking with Dinosaurs in 1999. Unfortunately, the general public's perception of Leopleurodon may have been unintentionally misled by the scientific inaccuracies of the BBC's documentary. On Walking with Dinosaurs, it was claimed that the Leopleurodon was a 25 metre long behemoth, when in reality it would have measured around 6 to 7 metres long. The mistake came about when the show's researchers based their reconstruction on fragmentary remains of the animal's skull. What wasn't known at the time was that pliosaurs like Leopleurodon had very large heads compared to the rest of their bodies, with the skull being about one-fifth of the total length of the animal. The researchers mistakenly extrapolated the larger size of the body based on the more traditional ratios which have since been proven wrong. Leopleurodon lived in shallow seas over what is now Europe and would have been the apex predator feeding on fish, squid and other smaller marine reptiles. It had four powerful flippers, characteristic of all plesiosaurs and pliosaurs, and while this method of propulsion may not have been the fastest method to have evolved, they would not have been as fast as modern great white sharks, for instance. It did provide the ability to accelerate at a great rate, perfect for an ambush predator. Its teeth were 20 centimetres long, but much of that length was buried in the jaw. Along with the large size of its skull, this detail indicates it had a very powerful bite. The positioning of the nostrils, one on each side of its snout, indicates it had a directional sense of smell. This would enable Leopleurodon to find its prey while still well out of visual range, perhaps even sensing the blood of fresh kills from other predators like sharks can today. As dominant as pliosaurs were, they went into decline 150 million years ago at the start of the Cretaceous period as a new breed of marine reptiles began to challenge them for their apex status. When mosasaurs arrived on the scene, it was the beginning of the end for the pliosaurs, and they were eventually completely replaced by this new predator. Well, that's all I have for you today, and as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. And I hope to see you next time when we'll be looking at the erupted. I'll see you then. Goodbye.